Hello everyone. Thank you very much for watching today's Sigma Stage Online. I am Kazuto Yamaki, CEO of Sigma Corporation. Today, I'd like to introduce you to an exciting new product. Today, we are announcing Sigma 105mm F2.8 DGDN Macro Art. As the name of DGDN indicates, this lens is designed especially for full-frame mirrorless camera. And here is a 105 meter macro. This lens will be available in, for air mount and Sony E-mount cameras. Right now, we have macro 105 millimeter f2.8 EX DG OS HSM in our lineups. This 105mm macro has been one of the Sigma's most popular lens for a long time, but to a great surprise, this lens has become even more popular during the coronavirus crisis. During this period, many countries have been in lockdown, and the sales of our cameras and lenses dropped significantly. However, the demand for this lens remained stable, and in some countries, the sales of this lens increased significantly. This is a sales figure of this 105 meter macro from April to June, in comparison with the same period of the last year in US, UK, Germany, France, and Benelux. As you can see here, in the US, the sales of this macro lens increased by 74.8% compared to last year. In the UK, plus 27%. In Germany, plus 106.4%, which is more than double. And in France, plus 27.8%. In Benelux, plus 41.8%. This rising demand for this lens took us by surprise. But we began to realize that people are rediscovering the beauties in their close surroundings and the photographing the amazing macro images, which we do not believe that we can make a great images. I think it's fantastic that people are challenged to change the way they shoot and find joy in capturing the day-to-day -day object. The coronavirus had had a significant impact on all of our lives, and I sh share my deepest sympathy with those who are affected by it. But these amazing macrophotography we've seen in this past few months have been a small positive from this uh, difficult time. So I'm very happy to announce this new 105 meter macro, DGDN. I believe this fills the gap in the market today for users of full frame mirrorless cameras. Let's check the size and weight of this lens. The length of this lens is 133.6 millimeter. The maximum diameter is 74 millimeter, and the weight is 715 gram. The concept of this lens is to make the best macro lens even better. In order to make this the best macro lens, we focused to achieve the best possible optical performance and ease of use as a macro lens. We stuck to this concept from the beginning to the end, and we believe we achieved this goal. We have done these things to make this lens the best macro lens. The one, achieving the best ever optical performance. Two, achieving attractive front and rear bokeh. Three, robust focusing structure. Four, a precise focus control. So let me explain why and how we achieved these things. The first thing is the, the best possible optical performance. So let's check the 
MTA performance of this brand new 105 meter macro. This is the MTA performance, and the vertical axis shows the optical performance, and the horizontal axis shows the image height. The left hand side shows the center of the image, and the right hand side shows the corner of the image. The red line shows the performance at the low spatial frequency, and the green line shows the performance at the high year spatial frequency. The higher the curves, the higher the optical performance. So as you can see here, this 105 meter macro performs very well from center to corner, and from low spatial frequency to high spatial frequency. This means you can expect a very, very sharp image with a fine details. So next, let me compare this performance with the existing 105 meter macro. The left one is a new 105 meter macro. The right one is existing 105 meter macro. As you can see, the new 105 meter macro outperform the existing 105 meter macro. And this is especially true when compared at the, by the performance at one to one magnification. Again, the right left one is a new 105 meter macro, and the right one is the existing 105 meter macro. And clearly, the new 105 meter macro outperformed the existing 105 meter macro. And then let me compare this performance with our 70 millimeter f2.8 DG macro art. 70 millimeter macro is known as the best macro lens in the market today in terms of the optical performance. And as you can see, the new, this brand new 105 meter macro performance is equivalent or slightly better in the far corner of the images. So like this, the, this brand new 105 meter macro performs very well. Actually, suppressing the lens aberration as much as possible was a must for us to make this uh, the best macro lens. This 105 meter macro is compatible with Sigma's two teleconverters. TC1411 is our 1.4x teleconverter, and TC2011 is 2x teleconverter. With this teleconverter attached, the focal length of this 105 millimeter becomes 147 millimeter and 210 millimeter respectively. And with this, this, these three converters, uh, you can shift even higher magnification than one to one. This is a summary of the specification when the two teleconverters are attached uh, with this uh, macro lens. With the 1.4 X teleconverter, the focal length becomes 147 millimeter and you can shoot up to one to four to one magnification. With two X teleconverter, you can, uh, the focal length becomes 210 millimeter and you can shift up to two to one. So this is very important feature to create a unique and impressive macro photography. But the problem is that the subject is magnified and also lens aberrations are magnified. That's the reason why we have to minimize lens aberration in the original lens. Let me show you how the uh, lens aberrations are magnified when the teleconverters are attached. This image was not taken with this brand new 105 meter macro, but taken with another lens which has a significant longitudinal uh, chromatic aberration. There is a magenta color uh, in the front of the focus point and there's a green color in the back of the focus point. This is longitudinal chromatic aberration. And this is a crop image by the factor of 1.4 to sh simulate the image taken with a 1.4x teleconverter. As you can see, the, the, the chromatic aberration, the magenta and the green colors are also magnified. In the same way, this is a crop image by the factor of two. Again, the chromatic aberrations are magnified as well as the uh, subject. 
So when the, the 2x, 2x chromata uh, is attached, the lens aberration on the image plane becomes twice more visible. And with, uh, uh, for the longitudinal direction, the lens aberration are increased by four times. That's the reason why we have to minimize the lens aberration in the original lens. So we try to minimize all the lens aberrations, but we especially paid attention, paid careful attention to minimize the chromatic aberrations. These are the examples of chromatic aberration, and the red one is an example of the longitudinal chromatic aberration. The right one is a lateral chromatic aberration. These are quite annoying in image, and especially longitudinal chromatic aberrations are annoying because you can't collect by the software. This is a lens construction diagram of the new 105 meter macro and existing 105 meter macro. These two lenses had very similar specification, but the, as you can see here, the lens construction is uh, quite different. The top diagram shows the lens position when the focus is at infinity. And the bottom diagram shows the lens positions when the focus is at the one to one magnification. So in the case of the existing 105 meter macro, the two lens groups moves like a V shape toward the close uh, distance. On the other hand, in the case of new 105 meter macro, the one large focus group to the front side toward a closer distance. This is a very simple focusing system, but also it's easier to control the chromatic aberration. In the case of the focusing system, like in the existing 105 meter macro, it tends to create a chromatic aberration. That's why we decided not to take this design approach but this design approach. So this is how we achieved the best possible optical performance. The second goal is the attractive front and the rear bokeh. This is very important for macro photography, as you know. The, the macro photography requires a beautiful front and back bokeh. And our optical designer were aware of this importance from the beginning. And he paid a careful attention to create a nice, soft, and smooth bokeh. This is a simulated bokeh uh, when our optical designer created during, their, during his uh, optical design stage. The top uh, Im bokeh images is a simulated bokeh image, simulated front bokeh images. And the bottom box images shows the simulated back pocket. The two sets of the images in the far left shows the images when the focus is at 4.2 meter. And to the right direction, the focus get closer and closer. And the left, uh, left, left side, uh, the right side images shows the bokeh at one to one magnification. These simulated bokeh consist of the small dots. And if these small dots spreads equally in the inside of the circle, it means the bokeh is smooth and soft. If more dots come to the edge of the, the circle, it means the bokeh looks lousy. We call it double line bokeh. So, our design goal is to avoid a double line bokeh, but to create the soft and smooth bokeh. So by through, uh, doing uh, this kind of simulation, we could confirm that this lens can deliver the smooth and soft bokeh. Our optical designer were also aware of the importance of the shape of bokeh. He paid careful attention, create a, a, a nice shape of bokeh. And this is a comparison of the bokeh, uh, bokeh between new 105 meter macro and existing 105 meter macro. Actually, 
both bokeh looks very nice, but the, the bokeh of the new 105 meter macro are rounder and looks more natural. So through this kind of uh, simulation and the consideration, we could create the very smooth and soft bokeh like uh, seen in this image. So this is uh, our second goal. And we successfully achieved a very nice front and back bokeh. The third point is the robust focusing structure. As you know, the macro lens are used in the variety angles, the downwards direction and the, the horizontal direction, and sometimes upward directions. And lens must maintain the consistent optical performance in these directions and sometimes at the extreme position. So our mechanical engineer created a unique uh, mechanical structure to stabilize the, the focusing unit at any direction, at any position. This is how the focusing unit travels inside of the lens barrel. The focusing unit travels along the, the straight grooves. The part that land along the straight group, which are shown in red here, uh, normally much shorter, but we made it longer for this lens to stabilize the focusing unit inside the lens at any direction, at any position. Actually, um, making the, the focusing unit move uh, smooth inside the lens it's quite challenging with this kind of structure because it requires uh, the higher precision of all these parts. We have to make the, all the parts with much tighter tolerances, but the, our expert in our as factory made it possible. So the last point is a precise focus control. This is also very important for macro photography because the depth of the field during the macro photography are very shallow. So if the focus uh, unit doesn't allow the precise enough movement, you can't control the focus point as you want. This is the part called uh, cam barrel, which has the, the cam group, you can see the inside of the part. This is the cam group, and uh, this uh, cam group controls the movement of the focusing unit. We, uh, we made this cam group longer than normal to allow the focusing unit uh, move more to, uh, to give the users more precise focus control. So by making the, this uh, cam group longer, uh, you can control the, the focus more precisely. The only one drawback from doing this is the focus speed. The, it slows down the autofocus speed, but we prioritize the focus accuracy and the precise focus control than the autofocus speed, because this is macro lens. This is inside of the cam barrel part. And you can see here the cam uh, uh, group. As you can see, the cam group does not pass through to the other side of the parts. If it passes through the other side of the parts, it may lose the robustness. The, the, this part may lose the robustness and this part may lose the roundness. Uh, we wanted to avoid because this is a very important part to support the, the focusing unit. So we decided to use this type of the cam group, which we call inner cam. And this inner cam requires not only the special machine to process, but also the very high manufacturing skill. I'm very thankful to our metal processing expert in our ice factory to do it. The element users can change the sensitivity of the manual focusing using Sigma Optimization Pro via USB dock. Uh, you can make it faster or slower depending on your pr preference. So we uh, achieved the best possible image uh, optical performance and we created a very attractive uh, front and rear bokeh 
and uh, we created a robust focusing structure to stabilize the focusing unit to achieve the consistent optical performance. And we achieve, uh, provide a pre uh, precise focus control. All of these factors are very important, we believe, for macro lens. But as you know, uh, lens design is not perfect. It always come with, comes with some compromise. And this lens is not the uh, exception. Uh, because we prioritize those factors Im important for the lens, macro lens, this lens has two downsides. First is that there is no uh, optical, optical stabilizer. We know that optical stabilizer is very useful, but uh, for this lens, we prioritize the optical performance. Second is the autofocus speed, as I have explained. We prioritize the focus accuracy and uh, precise focus control. But in order to make the autofocus speed as fast as possible with this uh, focusing system, we use a hypersonic motor. Thanks to the hypersonic motor, the, I believe the focus speed of this lens is fast enough for the normal use. During my introduction of the new products in the past, I have introduced our special specialist team for ghosting the flare, which is called Ghostbusters in the office. They did a great job again for this lens too. They started working together with our optical designer and mechanical designer from the very early stage of the, uh, the design and simulated the ghost and flare in the image and they give the feedback to the mechanical engineer and the optical engineers. This is a simulation done at the initial stage of the uh, optical design, and this is the same simulation done at the late design stage. As you can see, the, uh, both optical design and mechanical design have been modified significantly. Many factors influence this modification of the design, but the feedback from the Ghostbusters uh, has a significant influence to the, this modification of the design. And once they have the prototypes and the pre-production models, they shoot uh, actual images uh, with the light source in it. And uh, they analyze them all if there's any annoying uh, ghosting and flares. For this lens, they took nearly 5,000 shots and analyzed them all to eliminate uh, annoying the ghost, ghost and uh, flares in the image. And also, in order to uh, uh, satisfy the, pro uh, the professional uh, photographers, we implemented the many functions in this lens. Like other lens, we, here is a, a, a AF-MF switch. And here we have AF, AF lock button. You can lock the focus position by holding, this, holding down this button. Also, you can customize this button if the camera allows to do it. Here is a focus limit switch. Uh, you can limit the focus area by using this switch. And here is aperture ring click switch. You can uh, click or de-click the aperture ring. When you shoot the video, you can de-click the aperture ring for the smooth and the quiet operation. And here is the aperture ring lock switch. Uh, you can lock the aperture ring at all position or between the f2.8 to f22. Or you can unlock the, the aperture ring completely. So uh, this is explanation of our this uh, one of five meter macro. Now I'd like to share with you the sample images taken with a brand new one of five meter macro. As you can see here, uh, you can expect the very very sharp image with almost no chromatic abrasion and you can see the very fine details in the image. With this amazing macro image, macro lens, I hope you enjoy the macro photo photography. I'm sure you can find the beauty in your close surroundings and find the joy in capturing the day-to-day -day object. So, 
uh, I hope, uh, I truly hope you enjoy the, the taking images with these amazing macro images. The last but not least, uh, this lens will be available on October 23rd, worldwide. The price is $799 without VAT or 749 euro with regular VAT or 699 pound with VAT. Thank you very much for watching my presentation and I'm very thrilled to deliver this amazing macro lens to you. I hope you enjoy the macro photography with amazing lens. Thank you very much.